This is part two of a six-part video series seeking to answer the question, does annealing affect precision and accuracy? Now, in our previous video, I explained the entire process. It's a fairly long, drawn-out process where I extremely consistently loaded 60 rounds of 308 Winchester using 168 grain Sierra tipped Match King bullets. You can find all the details of how those things were reloaded and how consistent they are by watching the previous video and I've put the link in the description that you'll find below. Now just to catch you up on what we are doing in the big sense, in a big overview, of those 60 rounds, 30 of those rounds are using annealed brass, the other 30 are using standard or unannealed brass. I'm going out and I'm shooting five shot groups. Two of those groups are shot on each se uh, session, one is annealed, the other's not annealed. And uh, I'll be continuing that until I have fired all 60 of those rounds. I'm shooting at 200 yards from the prone position with my Ruger precision rifle. Now, if you also want to catch up on the first set of rounds that I fired, uh, the first two five-shot groups, uh, you can watch that again in that previous video. So one of those uh, series is already in the books and uh, today I shot the second of those groups, second series of those groups and before I run the range footage on that there's a couple things I wanted to uh, mention before I do that and the first thing uh, is you know last time the very first set that I fired showed a fairly large difference between those two groups the annealed versus the unannealed and I started thinking about why might that be. Of course, it may not continue through all of these different groups uh, that I'll be firing, but I still wanted to address it fairly early on and catch it or kind of nip it in the bud if there is some sort of something else going on. And one of the things I thought about is that, uh, you know, neck tension is really important for precision rifle shooting. And all of these rounds, all 60 of these rounds, are using two and a half thousandths, uh, between two and two and a half thousandths of an inch of, of neck tension. That's not a tremendous amount of neck tension, but it really is what that Ruger Precision Rifle seems to prefer. It shoots those very, very well. And what I was thinking, though, uh, is that under recoil, by the time I get to that fifth round, it's possible that the bullet seating depth, which was very consistent when I started, the bullet seating depth may be changing on um, maybe the fourth or the fifth round in that magazine. So what I'm doing is I am measuring the cartridge base to ogive on these rounds. Of course, I've measured those before I even started at, as I finished up my reloads, um, but even before I'm starting to shoot, I'm double checking that cartridge base to O-Drive, CBTO, and the first round, uh, one of them that I've measured, I'm putting that in the mag first. First in, last out. I'm firing four of the rounds in that five shot group, and then I'm pausing. I'm going to take out that fifth round that's been sitting in the magazine, measure CBTO again, and see if it has changed and then of course I'm still gonna fire it and so we're gonna see how that uh, played out here in just a little bit the other thing I'd like to mention is that well I had camera problems and so I'm gonna have to be a little bit um, I'm gonna have to use a little bit of ingenuity I guess or alternatives uh, to how this video is gonna play the uh, the video that I normally use um, at the shooter's position, my position, uh, is blurry. It, it didn't focus, so something happened uh, with that camera. And so I'm going to narrate. I'll probably speed it up a little bit not to uh, have you watch blurry film footage uh, for very long. 
But lucky for us, the uh, remote camera that was right on the target is crystal clear, and so we can still gain quite a bit from it. The chronograph worked beautifully. My lab radar worked beautifully. So we got great velocities on all 10 of those rounds that I fired. Well, enough talk about all this stuff. Let me run the film footage. Now I'm going to be shooting the annealed group first and one of the things I'm also doing is measuring that cartridge base to ogive CBTO for the first round that I'm putting in the magazine and that is 2.063 inches. I'm shooting at the target in the upper left at 200 yards and you'll notice that I've actually fired some ciders beforehand and all of those flew just a little bit to the left, a couple inches to the left. And so I'm coming back one full MOA, four clicks, uh, to the right to try to correct for that. Now, maybe I corrected too much. We have about an inch, a little bit over of an inch um, to the right on that first shot. But I will note that the wind is blowing just a little bit to the right. I have a small flag that I put on my target at 200 yards. Well, round number two flew a little bit low. I don't think that was me. I just think it flew a little bit low, maybe three quarters of an inch lower than that first round. There's round four. Now, before I fire round number five, I'm going to drop that mag, pull that round out, the fifth round that's been sitting in there the whole time, and remeasure cartridge base to ogive. And what we're seeing is that it didn't move at all. I'm still at exactly 2.063 of an inch. So that round inside the magazine under that recoil didn't move at all. Bullet seating depth did not change at all. So that's good to know that. Let's go ahead and finish up this group. Well, round number five is in the books. Group number one is in the books. Okay, based on what I'm seeing on the target, I'm going to come back two clicks back to the left uh, to try to correct for that a little bit. And uh, by the way, that first round that's in the magazine has a combined um, a cartridge base to ogive CBTO of 2.0635. Very, very consistent between these two groups. And I'm now going to be firing at the target on the right, upper right. Well, maybe I came back too much. You know, maybe I would have been better off just one click instead of two. But you know, have you ever read some of the stuff by Jim Owens? He talks a lot of competitive shooter, uh, and he talked a lot about wind and the mental effects while you're shooting. And he said winning is all in the mind. Uh, but um, one of the things that he talked about is oftentimes when we make clicks, we'll make two clicks, let's say, to the left on the scope, but we're inadvertently also making two clicks to the left in our minds. And uh, that might be what's happening. He said a lot of folks can't, don't even know it, but you subconsciously uh, or accidentally correct just a little bit because you know it's got to go that way. I don't know if I'm doing that, but it, it could be. I'm not going to make any more changes. We're going to keep shooting this five-shot group. There's round number two. Round number three kind of rounds out a nice triangle shape there. There's round number four. Now I'm going to stop again, drop that mag, pull that round number five out of the mag, and remeasure CBTO, cartridge base to ogive. And once again, we are exactly the same 2.0635. Let's go ahead and get that last round fired, round out this group. There's round number five. Boy, that one flew quite a bit uh, out there. Not too happy with that. Don't think I pulled it, though. It actually felt very, very good. Let's go ahead and put her back on safe. Head back in. See how it all turned out. I just shot two groups from what I called set two. Now, set two, if you watched or maybe didn't watch our previous video, set two and these different sets, sets one, two, three, and so on, uh, they were, first of all, subdivided based on the weight of those cases. So the, all those uh, federal cases were weight sorted. And then, because I ended up with 30 pieces of brass, 
uh, that belong to set 2, 15 being annealed and 15 unannealed. I further subset those based on that uh, cartridge based ogive measurement. And the set that I was shooting today, or the subset that I was shooting today, had pretty much identical CBTO with only uh, about one thousandth of an inch of, um, of difference between the CBTO on all ten of those rounds uh, that I fired. And what we saw is that that first round loaded into the magazine, first in, last out, that recoil had no effect on it at all, and I'm really happy to see that um, because if I didn't see that, if I saw something else that those rounds were moving under the recoil or the bullets were moving under the recoil, I would have had to have gone to my bobsled and single fed those to then eliminate that variable. But that's not the case, and I'm really happy that it, it turned out like it did. But let's talk about the groups. Let's talk about those two groups. I fired the annealed group first, those five shots, and you know, it did darn well. The um, MOA of that group was 0.62, very much sub MOA group right there. And of course, remember that this is at 200 yards. And oh, I'm really happy to see this that um, we have essentially two rounds passing through one hole right there. I occasionally get that. I have never gotten it for five rounds, but. Um, I've gotten it right there for those two rounds, and that, that's really good. The other group that I fired, the not annealed brass, otherwise identical, uh, it got also a sub MOA group, uh, but almost one MOA, 0 0.97 MOA group, principally because of this one right here. And none of them really were super tight, but this is a pretty good four shot group right here, that last one that I fired after I broke my position that might have something to do with it. Um, ended up with that about uh, one MOA group. Now previously, the unannealed group shot quite a bit better than the annealed group. Now things are starting to maybe level out a little bit. We've got two different uh, sessions in the books. We've got more to go before we can really draw the conclusion about does annealing affect precision and accuracy of our rounds. You won't want to miss our next episode. We're going to talk about a new way, perhaps a better way or at least an additional way to measure your groups. We're still going to be using MOA, but you're going to see uh, that, uh, well, you're going to see how it's done. A little bit different spin on all this. Thanks for watching.